We're gonna see the elephants today. We're gonna see the elephants today. We're gonna see the elephants today. Hello! Welcome to my video! This video is going to be all about um, the elephant sanctuary that I visited while in Chiang Mai with Fraser. Just a disclaimer, I'm not sponsored or anything, please. I'm such a small YouTuber. Uh, I'm just making a video about it because I wanted to share my experience and what I thought about the whole thing, basically, uh, before anyone makes any judgement. I did choose this place based on my research and my understanding of the elephant uh, tourism industry in Thailand, but this video will explain even further what I've learned and what I've researched and what I've experienced in the sanctuary. But before that, I will show you the day that I had while at the elephant sanctuary. It's called Elephant Jungle Sanctuary. They also work with a, a non-profit organization called The Care Project and The Care Project, they raise money so that they can have clinics and stuff for elephants who are suffering from any injuries or infections, uh, you know, old age diseases, stuff like that. But anyway, I'll get to that after I show you what an amazing day I had at this sanctuary. Um, I hope you enjoy and we'll get to the questions after this. Was that ride for you? Uh, it was okay. It was a bit, <laughs> bit rough and tumble. It was a it was roller coaster, but it was fun. Um, I managed to actually sleep while sitting, but then I woke up immediately when he braked and like did really sharp turns. So, uh, all good now. We're headed towards the sanctuary and we're in like a little village. Let's go! Nom nom nom. Hey. Let's see. Where's the other one? Nom 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 nom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs>
baby. Hi, baby. <laughs> oh no, it's so small. Oh, baby, baby is coming. Baby is coming. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's so heavy. <laughs> it's <Hey>. my <laughs> Okay, I hope you enjoyed those videos. Um, I really had such a good time while I was in the elephant sanctuary. It was a wonderful experience to see the trainers and the elephants interact with each other and just see how calm and beautiful these animals are. So anyway, let's get started with all the information that I could share with you. So first of all, the place that we went to is called the Elephant Jungle sanctuary. It's in Chiang Mai. It's about two hours away from the city. What we paid for and what we booked is called, let me look here, One Day Walk with Elephants Chiang Mai. So uh, what it was was we would go wake up early in the morning like at six or seven or something and the driver would come and pick us up and in Chiang Mai they have like these they're kind of they're called taxis and they can fit about 10 people in it but they're not they're not the most comfortable um, taxis to be in. It's basically just like a truck and then it's like wood and they've got like these cushions for the seats and you're basically sitting on that for two plus hours while they bring you through traffic and these windy roads towards um, a secluded jungle area where the elephants are staying. Uh, they call it the campsites but it's like massive, vast areas of just like, there There are some farmlands because there are villages there, but it's also just jungle, just huge spaces of jungle. And that's fucking great because we want the elephants to be comfortable, as comfortable as possible. So this is what we paid for. One day walk with elephants Chiang Mai. Uh, for two people, it is 7,000 baht. I think in, in pounds, it's about 175 pounds, 176 pounds. I'm going to say that's the ballpark. And in USD, it's about $230. Now, this is kind of expensive, I guess. But um, my intentions is that I'm paying uh, for a great experience, but, not, but the money is going towards taking care of these elephants and I can only assume that it takes a lot of money to take care of giant animals like this um, you know they eat a lot they need medicine they need space and the staff members that live and work with these elephants they need to be fed and taken care of as well so I don't mind paying that amount of money if it means that the elephants are happy the people are, who are taking care of the elephants are happy and everything is clean and everything is you know well conserved so no problems at all um let's see just a little bit of an insight about um the elephant industry in thailand it's a little bit horrible to call it the elephant industry but i mean it still exists till today um so i i pulled up some articles here about it and there's an article about ecotourism in thailand by a man named man or woman i'm so sorry it's it's a uh, it's a Thai name. I can't tell if there's any uh, specific gender to these names, but this person's name is Prasop Tiprasert. And it says here that a um, 100 years ago, there were about 100,000 domestic, domesticated elephants in Thailand, and almost all of them were employed by the logging industry. So I'm sure you've seen all around the internet how elephants are being used to uh, transport timber and drag like logs across rivers and hills and stuff. And you have to imagine that um, 
you know, 100 years ago in Thailand, even in Malaysia, there weren't, you know, tools, industrial tools to, to build these things. Now, I'm nowhere near justifying the fact that you should use elephants, but elephants were domesticated by um, people from generations ago, and they were born into families where they're meant to be in the logging industry, which is a shame, but they still exist today, and that's sad. So being a Malaysian, I am very familiar with uh, the elephant tourism industry. Um, in Thailand, there's the logging industry for where the, where there are elephants that are still working in. Unfortunately, even in areas of deforestation, there are elephants who are carrying timber to factories and stuff like that. And then there's elephants in the tourism industry. And what a lot of people know about is elephants who are in the riding industry. I've never ridden an elephant before. I've never even thought about it. But I do have a vague memory of when I was younger, I think I was like a teenager, 15 or 16 or something. I was in Bangkok with my, with my family, with my mom. And I remember seeing an elephant walking around with its owner. It was, I'm pretty sure it was a baby elephant because it was not that much taller than me, probably like two, three years old or something. And it was going around and the owner was asking for money in exchange to feed the elephant. So you give the elephant bananas or whatever it is. And I'm pretty sure I have a photo somewhere. If I can find it, I'll put it somewhere here. And I'm not proud of that. But then again, at that time, I was not very educated about these things. So I think that was part of the very mm, cruel uh, tourism industries that still go on today. For this trip, I wanted to learn about what's happening with elephants in Thailand now. The ones that are actually, unfortunately, born into a situation where they have to be domesticated and trained for logging or for riding. What happened to the ones that are rescued, right? So that's why I kind of decided that maybe we should go to the sanctuary just to see what it's like. You know, I wanted to go with an open mind. I didn't want to have preconceptions. I wanted to... Uh, give the people in the tourism industry the benefit of the doubt. I don't want to be judgmental, you know. So why did I choose Elephant Jungle Sanctuary specifically? Well, when I searched about them, I saw that they were affiliated with the nonprofit that I mentioned earlier called Care Project. And, you know, their main goal is to rehabilitate domesticated elephants. They don't take wild elephants into the sanctuary. That's obviously not allowed. I made my judgment based on what I read online and even though I went with Fraser to the sanctuary and I had tiny doubts, you know, my opinion changed along the, uh, you know, along the way during the day when I experienced like chatting with the trainers and observing the elephants and just seeing the general energy and vibe of everything. You know, I liked their the image that they were portraying online. I liked their intent. It seemed promising and I was giving them a little bit of trust. You know, hopefully I'm making the right decision and I wanted to go with an open mind and then I wanted to form my opinion after I visited the sanctuary. So that's partially why I I um, chose jungles, uh, Elephant Jungle Sanctuary. Let me read you. I'll, I'll put all of the details in the description, whatever I've, whatever articles I'm referring to the website of Elephant Jungle Sanctuary and all these things, I'll just put it down below. So as I said, I can read you a little bit of the description on the website. So it says here like, for example, um, EJS, Elephant Jungle Sanctuary, they are in collaboration with Care Project, which is fully funded. Um, they want to contribute back to um, an ethical way of, of managing the elephant tourism industry. And they've got completed projects like the Elephant Clinic and Hospice. Um, it says here, this facility provides convenient health care for animals in our care and around the area. Um, Hope for, for Strays, which is in Pattaya, provides donated food and vaccinations. Southern Elephant uh, Hospital in Krabi provides donated food, medical supplies and medication. Grassroots projects along Maywang uh, province offers donated school supplies, construction costs and programs. So, you know, like they... The money that goes into the sanctuaries goes to all of these like initiatives and I thought that was great, that's really good and obviously 
the primary thing about these sanctuaries is to take care of the elephants. So that is why I wanted to go. I mean, I, I just, I've never been near an elephant before and I love elephants. I only remember a time when I was in uh, South Africa and we went on the, the safaris in, um, what is it called? It was a national park. And you can see elephants from far away and they're so magnificent and so beautiful but they're wild you can't be near them they're gonna stampede you and like fucking crush you with their foot so the fact that there are um, opportunities for you to engage with elephants that have been rescued from dire situations where they were maybe abused or like overworked tired sick it's also wonderful and the fact that the money goes to these elephants just makes me really happy you know in the package that I took, uh, which is the one day walk with the elephants, it includes a mud bath, um, feeding the elephants, taking a walk with the elephants. It was, the descriptions are not, they're pretty vague actually. Meet the elephants, feed, interact, play, mud spa, walk with elephants, um, you know, lunch, walk with elephants, you know, stuff like that. The schedule's pretty um, vague in terms of what exactly you do with the interactions of the elephants but they do have like descriptions but you'll only know when you go there and that was kind of the what are we going to expect but i mean it was great so one of it was the mud spa one of the things that we actually did with the elephants was give them a mud spa i read online that actually mud is very good for animals, especially elephants, because... Uh, so I found this article called Mud Wallowing by sabisabi.com and it says here that mud acts as a sunscreen and an insect repellent for animals, especially for animals with like sparse hair. So elephants have like, you know, hair sticking out, but they're all like, it's kind of like rough, like sandpaper. That's the only way I can explain it. And it's kind of like, they use um, mud as a repellent and as a sunscreen. So one of the things that we did was we took mud from a pond and then we just like smothered their faces. Um, another disclaimer, okay, these elephants are not forced to do the mud bath or go to the river with us. Um, the trainer already mentioned that if the elephants don't want to do it, then so be it. You kind of have to accept the fact that the elephants are not in the mood to go and have a mud bath or go and cool down at the river. Um, sometimes they'll be more than happy to go and we'll just follow them. And then sometimes they stick their bodies in the river for like five minutes and that's it. We're out. And they said that you cannot expect the elephants to just follow what you want because that's they can do what they want basically the whole sanctuary is just to make them happy so um but they are domesticated they're like they're like dogs right so if you tell your dog okay we're gonna go for a shower sometimes the dog will be like let's go you know tails wagging or whatever sometimes they're gonna hide in the closet you know it's the same with the elephants like they will call the elephant's name and be like do you want to go for a bath do you want to go for a little soak in the river if they're not in the mood, they're not in the mood. Oh well. The trainer actually mentioned that there were people who paid for um, like a half day with the elephants and they were complaining that and like this is part of the package so the elephants should be going on in the mud or in the river. I mean like that's what I paid for. That's not the point. The money that you're paying is supposed to make the elephants happy. So, so what if the mud bath doesn't happen for you? That's just your luck. The elephants doesn't want to. Uh, the elephants don't want to have a mud bath with you. Just get the picture. You know what I mean. It's great that they told us this. They were just like, we're not gonna force them to do anything. If they don't want to do it, then they, you know, they have the right. You guys can just watch them, enjoy their day. You know. And I was like, cool, no problem at all. Oh, actually, the caretaker told us that elephants sweat through their toes, which is a bit weird, but because of that mud is used to like cool and regulate the body temperature that's a that's an interesting fact and then after the mud bath the elephants will usually go and you know wash it off or whatever and then they'll go to a tree and like scratch their bodies so like when you when you um walk past some of the trees that they actually use to like scratch their bodies they're they're so smooth and shiny because their skin's like sandpaper so imagine like months or years of just the elephant like 
scratching the body, uh, scratching their body on the tree, and it just like buffs the tree out. It's really cool. I've seen it when we were having a walk with elephants, and it's like they do the same thing on that tree all the time, and it's like whoa. Okay. Well, another thing that I wanted to talk about was the use of a bull hook. You know that thing that if you have seen. Um, elephants being used for uh, tourism purposes like riding you'll see like some of the trainers they actually use a bull hook to like slap the elephant's ass or whatever it is uh, kind of similar to when you go horse riding and the rider uses like a cane to slap the horse's ass same thing there's huge discussions about it all over social not social media the internet and one of the interesting things that the trainer was talking to us about was the use of this hook and how it should not be seen as a bad thing. Now, okay, obviously I don't agree or want to justify the use of any form of violence against any animals, especially elephants, but I can understand his point. Um, this trainer, he is in a family of um, people who have owned elephants for many decades or even centuries because, you know, elephants are part of the culture of Thailand for many years now and he's in a family that actually owns elephants and he was saying that not all elephants are easily trained or are docile so his his explanation was that the bull hook is like a police with a gun please don't even equate it to the American police let's just ignore that a normal police with a gun will never just stick out the gun and shoot someone, right? The gun doesn't define the police. If a police just takes out the gun and starts shooting people, who is the, the evil thing here? Is it the gun or is it the police? Same thing with the bull hook. They have a bull hook just for safety. In case an elephant gets spooked or is aggressive or uh, is threatened by something and they start, you know, stampeding or standing on their hind legs and gets violent they just have the bull hook for their own protection they don't use the bull hook to beat the animal now if anyone else uses it for other intentions for violence then it's not the bull hook it's the person that that's my point and that's what the trainer was also saying about the 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 use of the bull hook and I can completely understand it and I don't want to judge people for it. So another question is, why don't they just release elephants back into the wild? The elephants that are in a sanctuary are all domesticated. They're not wild elephants, meaning that they are born into the industry. They are not wild animals. So it says here, uh, on the ground, conservation is estimated only 6,000 or so Asian elephants remain in Thailand with roughly half in captivity. Half in captivity means half of them are in the logging or in the tourism industry. The simple fact is that there is not nearly enough natural habitat left in Thailand for these captive elephants to be set free. So if you're wondering why these domesticated elephants are not just put back into the wild, there may not even be wild left to begin with. With how the Malaysian, the increasing rate of deforestation in Malaysia is like, I can only imagine in Thailand it's the same. All the wild animals are just gone at this point. We cannot act as if captive elephants belong in the wild or should go back in the wild. Uh, the wild barely exists anymore. So, you know, you just the sanctuaries are trying their best to accommodate domesticated elephants and trying their best to protect them and conserve them. So you can't just think that you can just free them from the industry and then just put them back in the wild. It's, it's not black and white. I'm going to answer some questions that my friends asked me. And the first question is, uh, how old was the oldest elephant in the sanctuary? Now, I went to um, camp number eight, I think, in the elephant jungle sanctuary. And the oldest elephant there was actually 85 years old. Okay, now, I may be super fucking dense, but I did not realize that elephants had such a long lifespan. They are basically as old as humans. It, she was like the grandmother of the, of the whole group. 
when actually you look at her and you look at the younger one, you can see that she's aged. She has like all these beautiful lines on her face. Uh, let me try and find a video or a photo and I'll put it up somewhere here. She's so beautiful. She has like such beautiful eyes and eyelashes and stuff. And she has like all these wrinkles. And you can tell that she's actually aged gracefully in a way. And she was 85 years old and she was a, she uh, she gave birth to one of the other elephants who gave birth to another elephant. So it's literally like a family and it, it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Um, the second question is, is this all a scam? Yes and no. You need to do extensive research before you choose which sanctuary you visit. Um, how I chose is I wanted to know if these sanctuaries were transparent with what they're doing. I chose Elephant Jungle Sanctuary because they had an Instagram, they showed that they were affiliated with Care Project, they shared a lot of information online, as much as I could find at least. And um, I read reviews, you know, I read, I saw videos, and then I made a hopefully intelligent decision to go and visit this specific sanctuary. Make an intelligent decision with what you want to do. I'm glad that I went to the sanctuary. I had a great time and I loved it. I just loved it. I loved it. Another question I got is um, what are the trainers like with the elephants? So when I was there, um, I was actually pleasantly surprised with how well the trainers interacted with the elephants. It was a great feeling observing how the elephants were so comfortable with the trainers. I mean, I can only assume that if you are an animal that's afraid of your owner or your trainer, you would be cowering or you look stressed, you know? Like if um, if a dog was afraid of their owner, you know, their tails would be tucked under, they would be head down, they would be shivering. Uh, obviously dogs are not the same as elephants, but I can only assume that you can you can understand and you can feel that the elephant is stressed. I did not see any of that while I was there. In fact, the elephants were so comfortable with the trainers. It was like I'll I'll, I'll insert a video clip here of like um, the baby elephant. She's about two to three years old, and she was just like uh, in Malaysia we call it. She was really manja, so she was very affectionate and she was. She was just loving the trainers. The trainers were kind of just sitting and um, chilling out under the shade. And she went to the trainers and were, was like kind of jumping over them and like caressing them with her head. And, you know, the trunk was like going all over their faces and they were kind of just chilled out. It was it was a wonderful thing to to witness because I I don't know. I can't, I don't know how I feel about an elephant like hovering above you with their feet just like above you and you just feel like it's fine because you trust the animal and the animal trusts you, you know, it's like, it's a great interaction. Um, I can see that the trainers love the elephants so much, like just the way that they talk to the elephants, it's like how we talk to our animals, like how I talk to my cat or how Fraser talks to Buster, his dog, you know, it's, it's with so much sincerity based on my own judgment, my own, um, empathy I guess I feel as though like the trainers there loved what they were doing and they loved the elephants another question I got from my friend um, did Fraser enjoying enjoy being gnawed at by a baby elephant or was he a wee bit scared <laughs> so we went to go and visit um, a baby elephant the the newest member of the family and his name is Luffy and he, at the time, he was only two months old. I think right now he's three or four months old. He was only two months old. He was a big baby. He was like, I mean, I, I don't know what how huge a baby, is, a baby elephant is supposed to be, but he was pretty gigantic. I didn't realize he was only two months. And he also stood on my foot and I couldn't move my foot. I had to like frantically try and push him off because I thought he was going to crush me, basically. But um, he was very playful. He was exactly like a puppy. You know how puppies get like super excited over humans? The exact same thing. He was just like so excited. He wanted to play. He was like headbutting everyone. He was headbutting me like a million times and I almost fell many, many times. Um, I loved him. He was so cute. And here's here's the video of like Fraser getting 
basically eaten by this elephant. Um, he had no teeth yet, so he was basically gnawing. And he was gnawing on, on Fraser's leg. <laughs> It was like, and then they, it was so cute, and I was just having a good time recording Fraser getting eaten. It was so funny, and oh my god, <laughs> that was like one of my, the highlights of the day. It was one of my favorite things ever. Brilliant. So, in conclusion, about this whole experience, like I absolutely loved it. I love the elephants. The only thing that I would complain about was the ride from Chiang Mai to the sanctuary. That was rough. But I mean, like, it was nothing horrible or anything. It's tolerable. I still managed to sleep even though it was such a bumpy ride. <laughs> it was so uncomfortable. My ass was like sore as hell. But it was great. Uh, overall, still wonderful. Um, the people that we met were great. Um, the, the elephants were beautiful, I loved them so much and they were friendly, lovable, sweet, like they just did their own thing, you can feed them bananas and bamboo and then when it's done they're just doing their own thing, you know. I went to the sanctuary a little bit doubtful even after all of my research but I came out of it feeling very pleased, very happy. Um, my only advice to everyone else who is thinking of going to elephant sanctuaries please do your research make a make an intelligent decision um, go with an open mind and form your opinion after after interacting with the elephants after talking to the trainers after spending time to observe and then reflecting on what's happening in those sanctuaries I was only there for a day, so I can only make the judgment based on what my experience was. And my experience was great. I really, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not like an animal whisperer, I'm not a zoologist, I'm not a conservationist, but I'd like to think that my judgment's pretty good, especially with how people treat animals. Um, everyone was just so peaceful good vibes man good vibes um anyway i'll give you all the links to everything that i spoke about in the description i hope you enjoyed it um did i answer the question of the video are elephant sanctuaries ethical <laughs> unclear <laughs> yes and no depending on the sanctuary that you go to that's the reality, I guess. Wait, I need to tell you something that happened while we were in, uh, when we arrived at the sanctuary, right? So I was like all excited. It was a two and a half hour uh, taxi ride from Chiang Mai to the sanctuary. Uh, we get off the, t the, the, the taxi, we're walking and we're doing a short hike to the campsite. And then the first thing that we see, guess, guess what guys? The first thing that we see is a fucking elephant um, a male elephant, mind you, trying to have sex with another elephant. And I was like, huh? Because, <laughs> because the first thing that we see when we walk into the sanctuary space is an elephant penis. Like, he, he was like looking for that entrance you know what i mean and me and fraser were just like oh my fucking god what's happening this is the first time i've ever seen something so massive just google okay no i'm gonna put a video of what i managed to 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 capture when well, i was in shock but I, I managed to take out my camera for like a few seconds try and locate that that serpent all right and then you tell me whether you wouldn't be shocked if that's the first thing that you see at the sanctuary it was like like oh my god this boy horny <laughs> it's massive google it